This is Mr. Martin. These are the uh, video notes for uh, Math Analysis, Section 6.5. We're going to be looking at the trigonometric form of a complex number. This will be the day one of the notes. Um, so complex numbers really are very similar to uh, vectors, and a lot of the things that we do are going to look almost exactly the same as what we do with vectors. So kind of the same issue that you may have had with vectors was remembering all the different vocabulary and what it means and what the question is asking you to do. Um, you know, you, you want to be really careful with this section also because, uh, you know, the mathematics part is mostly arithmetic um, and you want to make sure you understand what the question is asking you for. So, um, if you have any questions, make sure that you write them down in the uh, margins of your notes and uh, ask me the next time you see me in class. So. Uh, for complex numbers, there are numbers in the form z is equal to a plus bi, where a is the real part, and bi is the imaginary part. And uh, remember that i is the square root of negative 1. So if we're, uh, if we're graphing um, in the complex plane, we've got the real axis, which was our uh, similar to our x-axis, and our imaginary axis, which is our y-axis. So if we're graphing... Um, some a plus bi, we're going to have a point a over here and a point b over here and then we would just graph the point right over here and unlike a vector where we may have uh, connected it to um, the origin with an arrow sometimes here we'll just make a dotted line that goes from the origin okay and then this would be a comma b which really would represent a plus bi now don't confuse this i with our standard unit vector in the x direction. Um, this i again stands for the square root of negative 1. Okay, so uh, just a quick simple example. Plot the point z is equal to negative 1 plus 3i. So we've got our uh, complex plane axes and um, we're going to graph basically negative 1 and then 3 and then here we would have the point right there that would be negative 1 3 which again represents the complex number negative 1 plus 3i and this is our real axis and this would be our imaginary alright so moving on um, we'll talk about the absolute value of a complex number uh, and this is very similar to uh, magnitude similar to magnitude of a vector So you can see, um, instead of using the double bars on each side, we just use absolute value bars. Um, and it's basically the same thing, the square root of a squared plus b squared. Um, you know, so again, just something you need to remember so that you can answer the questions. Um, another example here, let's plot and find the absolute value. So again, plotting it, we just need the point three and negative four so here's our point here three negative four and then if I want uh, the absolute value of z it's just going to be the square root of three squared plus negative four squared which is simply going to be five if you remember your triples you would see it's a three four five triple now, we can also represent a complex number in trig form. So, <coughs> if we, again, look at some complex number, a, b, and we make a little triangle out of this, we've got a right triangle, this is the radius, which uh, we're going to give a little uh, different name in a minute. So, and then here's our angle 
theta. So again, using right triangle trig, just like we did with vectors, we can find out that a is equal to r times the cosine of theta, and b is equal to r times the sine of theta, again using SOHCAHTOA. So then our complex number, z, becomes r cosine theta plus i times r sine theta and then sometimes we'll factor out the r so we get r times cosine theta plus i sine theta okay so this would be our trig form of the complex number basically breaking it down into a real component and an imaginary component using uh, right triangle trig okay so a little summary here the trig form of a complex number z is equal to a plus b i is given by z is equal to r cosine theta plus i sine theta and again r is the square root of a squared plus b squared this is like our magnitude but you can see here that we're going to call it the modulus and theta which is very similar to our direction angle but in uh, with complex numbers we're going to call it the argument so again when you see a problem and it says find the modulus and argument you need to know that really basically you're just finding the magnitude and the direction so let's take a look at a number let's write the complex number in trig form so I like to start with a little sketch so I've got negative 2 and negative 2 root 3 which is going to be somewhere between 3 and 4, so somewhere right about here. So we know that A is negative 2, and we've got that B is negative 2 root 3. So we can find our modulus. So R is going to be the square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 2 root 3 squared so this is going to be the square root of 4 plus that would be 4 times 3 is 12 so that's 16 square root of 16 is 4 so really for this one we have one of our special right triangles um, so now we're going to find the argument so we've got the tan inverse of negative 2 root 3 over negative 2 these are going to cancel out so uh, let's see I know that uh, tan inverse of root 3 that's going to be um, pi over 3 and since this one is in the third quadrant I know theta is really going to be 4 pi over 3 okay if it's a special angle I'm going to expect you to write it as a special angle as well so keep that in mind so now that I have um, the modulus and the argument, I can write z as 4 times the cosine of 4 pi over 3 plus i times the sine of 4 pi over 3. Okay, and this is kind of a weird form for you to write it because we're used to simplifying these values here, cosine 4 pi over 3 and sine 4 pi over 3. Um, when we write it in um, trig form, we're actually making it a little bit more complica complicated. Um, so keep in mind that you don't want to go back and find the cosine and sine of 4 pi over 3. All right, so um, go ahead and uh, pause the video. And uh, when you restart it, you'll see the solution to this. So you can uh, check it. Um, and uh, again, if you have questions, make sure you write those down and uh, ask them next time you see me. All right, so here's the solution for uh, example number four. We're going to find the modulus, which is two. We're going to find the argument, which is pi over six. Since we're in the first quadrant, we don't have to um, make any changes to that. And then uh, once you have r and theta, you can go ahead and write your um, complex number in trig form. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go the other way, and we're going to write the complex number in standard form. So really, all we need to do um, is 
kind of simplify. So with the other problems, we're making it a little more complicated. So um, we know that the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be negative 1 half, and we know the sine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. So now I've got that z is equal to 8 times negative 1 half plus i times root 3 over 2. And then if I simplify this, I get z is equal to negative 4 plus 4 root 3 i. All right, and then sometimes we'll put that i in the front. Negative 4 plus i times 4 root 3, so that you don't confuse it with being underneath the radical. Um, as long as it's clear, I don't um, have a problem with you putting it either way. All right, so uh, multiplication and division of complex numbers. So if we're given uh, two complex numbers in trig form, we've got z1 and z2, the product is going to be, so we're going to take r1 times cosine of theta 1 plus i times the sine of theta 1 times r2 times the cosine of theta 2 plus i times the sine of theta 2. Alright, so we're going to get r1 times r2 and then we're going to foil out the rest of that, so we're going to get cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2, plus cosine theta 1 times sine theta 2. I'm missing an i in here somewhere, so I need a, I'm going to put the i in the front there, and then I sine theta 1 cosine theta 2 and then plus so I've got I squared sine theta 1 sine theta 2 all right, so this i squared is really just going to be uh, negative 1, and then so this will change to a negative in the back end. So I've got uh, r1 times r2, and I'm going to factor out an i out of uh, these things here. So I've got uh, cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2. Uh, let's see, then I'm going to have minus sine theta 1, sine theta 2 from this term here. And then the two middle terms, I'm going to factor out the i, so plus i times cosine theta 1, sine theta 2, plus sine theta 1, cosine theta 2. So close my parentheses slide over just a little bit and rewrite that for you cosine theta 2 two sets of parentheses and then if we use some of our identity properties we're going to end up with r1 r2 is equal to or is equal to r1 times r2 times cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i times the sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. So we're kind of using our sum and difference formulas going backwards and this is what you end up with for the product of two complex numbers in trig form. Okay? And then, um, so here I've got two formulas. We could kind of do the same thing for um, the quotient. You know, we've got our two formulas here. So um, if you notice here, the difference when we do the quotient, 
we end up using the difference formula as opposed to the sum formula. So keep that in mind. Um, so why don't you go ahead and try uh, the examples that are left in the packet here. And um, I'll have the solutions for you in class. And uh, you could check those and make sure you ask me any questions that you have.